Okay, this lesson is about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is a phenomenon that occurs when you have a source that's emitting waves, but that source is also moving. So here's an example of a stationary source, and it sends waves in every direction, and they propagate outwards equally, um, making circle after circle. Um, and as they get further away, of course, another one comes along and does the same thing. But what if that source were to be moving? Well, if the source is moving, then as it's sending out a wave, it's sort of chasing after some of the waves that are in front of it, and it's getting further ahead of the waves that are behind it. So if we look on the left-hand side of the source, we're going to see wavelengths that are they're closer together, so shorter wavelengths um, as the source is coming towards you. And if you look behind it, the wavelengths um, as you're watching something move away from you, those wavelengths would be longer. So that's the Doppler effect. There's a shift in your frequency um, and wavelength perceived as the, uh, the sound waves are coming to you. Now let's take a look at a practice problem with this. Well, before we get into the practice problem, you should go over your notes and see the effects as we move towards the wave we produce, the the wave in front of us becomes shorter. We'll call it lambda prime. And that's going to be um, basically the amount of distance that the regular wavelength should be all the way across minus the amount of distance that the source has moved in the amount of time for one period. So when you apply that subtraction right here, you're going to get a couple of new equations to, to represent lambda, uh, lambda prime and frequency prime. Now, if the source is moving towards you, then we get an increase in frequency. So we're dividing by this uh, 1 minus v source over v sound term. And we should get a bigger number for f prime. And if the source is moving away from us, we're going to get a smaller number for frequency. We're going to shift the other way, so we're going to add this amount, uh, the source speed divided by the sound speed. All right, now let's apply that to a practice problem. So this problem reads, the predominant frequency of a fire engine siren is 1550 hertz when it's at rest. What frequency would you detect if that fire engine were moving towards you, kind of like this picture? or away from me, also like the picture. So let's do the scenario where the fire engine is moving towards us first. We know that the, um, the regular frequency when it's at rest is going to be 1550 hertz. We would like to know the new frequency, the perceived frequency. We do know that the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. And we also know that the source is going to be moving at 30 meters per second. So for question A, we've got the source moving towards us. So our equation is going to have the, the minus sign. So F prime is equal to F divided by 1 minus the speed of the source divided by the speed of sound. So when we plug in our values, 1550 hertz divided by 1 minus, that's going to be 30 over 343 and we get a new frequency of 1700 hertz. And for B, we'll make B blue. For B, we have the same sort of a phenomenon, except it's moving away. So the only difference when we apply our equation, we have to add the, the ratio in the denominator, so plus V source over V sound. 
Now, before we continue, just think about that for a minute. We should have a bigger number in the denominator here if it's moving away. And we should have a smaller number in the denominator up here because of subtraction when things are moving towards. And intuitively, that should make sense. When you have something moving towards you, the wavelengths are compressed, the frequency should be more often, it should be a higher number. Um, so that would make sense that you'd have a smaller number in the denominator. And likewise, down here, it also makes sense that if something's moving away, you're going to be seeing those waves less often. So a bigger number in the denominator would yield a smaller number for frequency. So then we get 1,430 hertz for your answer to B. Once you plug in, uh, I'm sorry I didn't show that you can map there, but if you plugged in 1550 hertz divided by 1 minus, or 1 plus 30 over 343. That's what that is. Let's let you try the next one.